You're on an abandoned beach, contemplating the sky. For the first time in your life, you admire the milky ribbon of the Milky Way. The Big Dipper seems to be drowned among dozens of other stars that you've never seen before. Meteors sometimes streak the sky with their fleeting light, and a bright red dot completes this magnificent picture. This is the fourth planet in our solar system, Mars. Among all the planets of our solar system, it is the second planet seen with the naked eye from the Earth. None of the celestial bodies, with the exception of the moon and the sun, has ever excited mankind as much as our neighbor. The red planet, named after the ancient Roman god of war, has excited the minds of many generations for millennia. It is especially since 1877 that it really fascinates. The Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli believes to discover irrigation channels on Mars. We then imagine that Mars is inhabited by Martians. Since then, we dream of going there. Mars is the planet that most closely resembles our own. Studying it closely would allow us to better understand our planet. It is also very close to the asteroid belt of our solar system. For some, going to this planet would allow to study closely these celestial objects made of rocks and metals. For others, Mars could be the fallback planet if we could no longer live on Earth. Myth for some, challenges for others, making a colony on Mars to make it habitable opens up a long series of questions. But our close cousin was not always an arid world at the mercy of the solar wind. There was a time when water covered a large part of the Martian surface and when a potential life could have developed there. Dear Traveler, today we're going on a journey to discover the mysteries of our close neighbor, the Red Planet. If you haven't already done so, think about subscribing and liking the video to support the channel. Thanks to all and enjoy the viewing. In the distant past, there's a lot of evidence that Mars was once warmer had a denser atmosphere, and its surface was covered with water. Just like the Earth, where its oasis of life is teeming on its surface. This is why researchers are very interested in this hostile world. But nowadays, exploration missions have shown that Mars is not the most favorable world to attract life. Mars is the fourth planet of the solar system, located one and a half times further from the Sun than the Earth, on a significantly more elliptical orbit, and receives, depending on its position on this orbit, between two and three times less solar energy than our planet. This is one of the reasons why its surface temperature varies from negative 148 degrees Fahrenheit to positive 80 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the time of day and the latitude. The Martian year lasts 687 Earth days. The day is almost equal to the Earth, unlike its diameter, which is only half. The force of gravity here is only about one-third of our planet. Its atmosphere is 100 times thinner than ours. Unsuitable for humans, it is composed mainly of carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and argon. It is not able to retain the heat of the sun efficiently. That's why if you were standing on the Martian equator at noon, your feet would be 75 degrees Fahrenheit and your head 32 degrees. Despite this, violent storms rage on the planet. For example, in 1971, wind-blown dust covered the surface of Mars for two months. The planet is covered with sand of a reddish hue, for which it received the nickname Red. The color of Mars comes from its high concentration of iron in its soil, and this famous red is in fact rust. But how could all this iron rust, knowing that the atmosphere of our neighbor contains very little oxygen? The answer is simply that at an earlier date, Mars was covered with water, which evaporated, leaving behind the traces of this ancient world. Its terrain is mostly composed of plains, nevertheless, there are meteorite craters and mountains on the surface of moons. The highest mountain is Olympus Mons, which rises to more than 17 miles. 
the red planet has two satellites, Phobos and Deimos. The former is a potato-shaped block pierced with meteorite craters 16 miles in diameter, larger than Deimos. In addition, the pressure on the red planet is much lower. Even on Mount Everest on Earth, it is still 50 times higher than on the surface of Mars. However, Mars has many features in common with our planet. Underneath its soil is a solid Earth, comparable in size to the landmass of our planet, although Mars is about half its size. Martian life, this mysterious facet of the red planet. To understand its origins, we must go back in time to where it all began, antiquity. In fact, the idea of the existence of a population on the red planet has invaded the scientific and astronomical scene for centuries. Being found in the writings of several science fiction writers, elucidating this theory in books and films. But everything changed in the second half of the century. After the launch of the first satellite in 1957, and the beginning of the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union, eyes were soon on the red planet beyond the Earth's orbit, and even the moon. Several attempts were made to send research vehicles to Mars, but this task was not easy. All missions failed. It was not until 1964 that NASA's second attempt succeeded. Mariner 4 reached Mars safely in 1965. Flying at about 6,200 miles above the planet's surface, it sent back to Earth 22 pictures. These were the first images of Mars from such a short distance, and none of these pictures showed irrigation channels on its surface. But scientists did see craters adorning the Martian land and confirmed that the planet's atmosphere was made up of carbon dioxide. At the end of the same decade, NASA launched two more spacecraft, which managed to take 200 photographs, as well as measure the surface temperature of Mars. In 1971, the USSR sent to the Red Planet two spacecraft, Mars 2 and 3, which included both an orbiter and a lander to explore Mars. The orbiters gravitated around the planet for several months, transmitting data. However, during its descent, Mars 2 crashed on landing, while Mars 3 became the first spacecraft to make a soft landing on the Red Planet even though it only worked there for a few seconds. It was the victim of a failure that gave it just enough time to transmit a dark and blurred image of the planet, and thus prevented it from providing scientific information. Still today, when we send a rover to Mars, one of the most critical steps is the landing. This phase lasts seven minutes. It is called the seven minutes of terror, In fact, because of the distance between the Earth and Mars, the waves sent from our planet take 15 minutes to reach the probe. So when NASA engineers receive the information that the rover has entered the atmosphere, it has already landed seven minutes ago. For seven minutes, it is impossible to know if the mission went well. Did the rover crash or land? In 1971 was a fruitful year for the study of the fourth planet. That year, the Mariner 9 probe arrived, not only taking thousands of photographs and mapping 85% of its surface, but also visualizing in detail the main characteristic places of Mars. For example, Mariner 9's data established the height of Olympus Mons, the tallest volcano in the solar system, rising to over 15 miles with a base diameter of 375 miles. But it also accurately measured Mars's famous canyon system, named Mariner Valley, which is four times deeper and five times longer 
than the Grand Canyon on Earth. The next breakthrough in the study of Mars did not come until 1976, when NASA delivered two spacecraft, Viking 1 and Viking 2, which completed the Martian photographic archive with tens of thousands of images. But more importantly, they conducted the first field experiments to find evidence of life. Unfortunately, these probes did not give a convincing yes or an unequivocal no. The three biological experiments conducted aboard the landers found unexpected and enigmatic chemical activity in the Martian soil, but provided no clear evidence of living microorganisms in the soil near the landing sites. According to the mission biologists, Mars is self-sterilizing. They believed at the time that the combination of ultraviolet solar radiation saturating the surface the extreme dryness and the oxidating nature of the soil chemistry prevented the formation of living organisms on the Martian surface. The Viking program unwittingly fueled the fire of the Martian civilization myth when one of the orbiters sent back an interesting image. It showed a pile of stones, one of which was strikingly reminiscent of a human face. The face of an ancient Egyptian sphinx next to the famous pyramids. The NASA researchers immediately disappointed the enthusiasts. They were a game of light and shadow. The face of the sphinx and the pyramid are in reality a hill and mountains illuminated in a fanciful way. In 1997, a revolutionary discovery was made when NASA sent the Mars Global Surveyor probe to Mars. Somewhere under the surface of the dead planet, water can still flow. The same year, the Pathfinder landed on the surface, bringing the first mobile research device, Sojourner, to the planet. It is the first Martian robotic rover able to move on the surface of the planet. It worked for only 83 days, but it was able to pave the way for the rovers that followed, the new stars of the study of the Red Planet. The rovers had a number of advantages over other research vehicles that studied Mars before them. Their cameras allowed them to create a panoramic image with which scientists could determine the most promising research objectives. In addition, the robots are equipped with a manipulator arm for sampling. In this context, Spirit and Opportunity, two rovers that arrived on a Red Cousin in 2004, their main task was to find evidence of the existence of water on Mars in the past. They found evidence that in its past, the red planet was warmer, with liquid water and even hot springs. In short, the conditions for the existence of Martian life were present. Arriving in 2012, the famous rover Curiosity made an interesting discovery. During its research, it showed that in the past, not only water could heat life on Mars, but also by analyzing the soil and rocks, the rover found traces of organic carbon, as well as sulfur, nitrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus, all necessary for the origin and existence of life. Another clue to the existence of life was revealed by the Mars Express orbital probe, sent by the Europeans in the early 21st century. This probe found traces of methane in the atmosphere of the planet a gas produced naturally by living organisms on Earth. Although its release on Mars could have another reason, for example, gas escaping from the planet's underground, where it's been locked up for millions of years, the discovery has intrigued scientists, and now the hunt for Martian methane continues. We now know that the Red Planet once had the conditions for the existence of life, it's time to start looking for it. This is what the new rovers will do. They will look for evidence that the now dead red desert 
may have once been, like the Earth, an oasis of life with its own particular characteristics. But for the moment, as the history of the study of Mars reminds us, mistakes are more numerous than success. With the help of Perseverance, which arrived on our neighbor in February 2021, NASA hopes to answer the question that worries scientists. Is there life on Mars? The chances of finding life on Mars are minimal. For example, in 2018, a group of European, a group of European scientists found signs of a liquid lake hidden one mile below the surface of the polar glacier. There may be microbes in such a reservoir, but this is a very difficult hypothesis to test. Therefore, scientists are betting on finding signs of past lives. This may not sound so exciting, but even such a discovery would be colossal. Otherwise, after all, we would be faced with a much bigger scientific mystery. Why the Earth gave life, and its neighboring planet, which has the appropriate conditions, did not. In 1877, the astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli, observing the planet through a telescope, discovered that it was drawn with straight dark lines, which he called channels. For a long time, it was believed that the channels were the creation of intelligent beings. When more powerful telescopes came along, it turned out that there were no canals, only mountain ranges, rifts, and other details of natural landscapes that merge into straight lines from a distance. Thus, the first attempt to find life on Mars fell apart. Another reason that scientists believed they would find life on Mars has to do with the seasonal color changes apparent on the planet's surface. This led to speculation that conditions might favor a blooming of Martian vegetation during the warmer months and cause plant life to go dormant during the colder months. However, later, objects were discovered on the red planet that were very reminiscent of dry riverbeds. According to one hypothesis millions of years ago, the atmosphere on Mars had a different composition, was denser and warmer, and rivers flowed through the planet. Thus, life could have existed, at least in the form of bacteria, which, after the beginning of the Martian Ice Age, would have hidden deep inside the planet from the cold, the winds, and the ultraviolet rays. In any case, some terrestrial microorganisms could survive even in such harsh conditions. The second factor that attracts scientists is Phobos. This satellite of Mars has a rather large surface and dimensions, but at the same time, a very small mass. Therefore, Phobos is hollow inside. But could such a planet have arisen naturally? For some, it seems unlikely. This reasoning has led some scientists to conclude that Phobos is an artificial satellite of Mars, created by mysterious extraterrestrial forces. Phobos is one of the two satellites of Mars, the other is called Deimos. It orbits very close to the red planet, about 60 times closer than the moon around the Earth. Deformed, cratered, and 100 times smaller than the moon, Phobos is a source of great controversy among scientists. A recent study shows that the Martian satellite Phobos orbits in a stream of charged atoms and molecules that flow from the red planet's atmosphere. Many of these charged particles, such as oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, and argon ions, left Mars over billions of years. Left Mars over billions of years as the red planet lost its atmosphere. Some of the ions, scientists believe, crashed into the surface of Phobos and may be preserved in its upper layer. This means that if the soil of Phobos were analyzed in laboratories on Earth, it could reveal key information about the evolution of the Martian atmosphere. Mars once had an atmosphere thick enough to hold liquid water on its surface. 
but today it has a density less than 1% of the density of the Earth's atmosphere. Another mystery that scientists want to decipher is where Phobos and Deimos came from. Are they asteroids created by gravity, or are they natural satellites of Mars, which formed at the same time as the planet? It is also possible that they formed from debris that exploded when the young Mars collided with another planetismal. In the same way that our moon is thought to have formed when the Earth collided with a rocky object. Most likely, both satellites were part of the asteroid belt. Then, these two were ejected by Jupiter to finally find themselves gravitationally linked to Mars, making these two surviving moons of Mars. But according to the latest scientific publications, these two moons, named for the twins of the god Mars and Venus in Roman mythology, would be the remains of an impact between the red planet and an asteroid. The debris of this collision would have formed a ring in which a dozen satellites would have been accreted. Only the two most distant worlds would have survived, Phobos and Deimos. Phobos is approaching Mars at a rate of one inch per year. In about 50 million years, it will reach the Roche limit, which is the distance at which the attraction of Mars will be sufficient to transform Phobos into rings like those of Saturn. Conversely, Deimos is gradually moving away from Mars and will eventually be ejected in a few hundred million years. In this context, the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency is preparing to send the Martian Moon's exploration probe to Phobos in 2024 to collect the first samples from its surface and bring them back to Earth. But these samples could reveal much more than the origin of Phobos if the probe lands on the side that still faces Mars. Phobos is bound to Mars as the Moon is bound to the Earth so the Moon always presents the same side to its planet. As a result, the rocks of Phobos facing Mars have been flooded with Martian atoms and molecules for thousands of years. Research shows that the higher surface layer on the near side of the planet has been exposed to Martian ions 20 to 100 times more than its far side. To reach this conclusion, a team of researchers analyzed data from NASA's MAVEN probe. The probe has been collecting data from Mars's orbit for more than six years to help scientists understand how Mars lost its atmosphere. It has also provided other important scientific data, such as how the planet's climate has changed. Since the spacecraft regularly crosses Phobos's orbit as it orbited Mars during its primary mission, NASA researchers thought they could use the MAVEN measurement to learn more about Phobos. After using the probe's instruments to measure Martian ions orbiting Phobos, the scientists then calculated how many ions might reach the surface of Phobos and how deep they would be implanted. The final result shows that it would be embedded only a few hundred nanometers or about 250 times less than the thickness of a human hair. Studying natural satellites to learn more about their parent planets is a common practice. For example, our moon, without the atmosphere, wind, and water to strip its surface of the former key elements, is considered by scientists to be the best preserved record of the early solar system. Scientists hope that more lunar surface samples will tell us about the Earth's ancient atmosphere or its early magnetic field. As with the Moon, the surface of Phobos could reveal information about early Mars when the planet was warm and wet. As recent studies have shown, life on Mars is possible, but not on the surface of the planet, rather in its mysterious depths. While some scientists expect to find only fossils in the depths of Mars, 
Others hope that life still exists beneath the surface of the red planet. But where can we find evidence that the environment in the depths of this planet is suitable for life? The answers may well lie in pieces of Martian soil that have hit the Earth in the form of meteorites. In fact, over the centuries, a large number of rock samples from the surface of Mars, and sometimes from deep within the planet, have entered space. By studying the chemical composition of Martian meteorites, it was found that contact with water produced the chemical energy necessary for the survival of microbial communities. The same energy is found in the depths of our planet. In other words, the importance of such research to science can be summarized as follows. Wherever there is groundwater, there is a high probability of finding enough chemical energy to support microbial life. Although we don't know for sure if life originated in the depths of Mars, if this is true, we can say that there's enough energy present to support it at this time. Thus, the key to studying life on Mars may be closer than we could have imagined and simply lie beneath our feet. In addition to Martian meteorites, recent discoveries have found microorganisms living in an extreme depth on our own planet. The survival of microorganisms in this case is achieved by radiolysis. This means that the elements of the Earth's crust in contact with water produce hydrogen and oxygen. Microorganisms absorb hydrogen and use oxygen to burn it. These organisms live in what is called the deep biosphere, an example of which is an area discovered at a depth of more than three miles in the rock that has not seen the light of day for more than a billion years. After searching for possible radiolysis components in Martian meteorites, the results were positive. And in many types of these Martian meteorites, all the components are present in appropriate quantities to create a habitat for life similar to that present on Earth. In addition, according to many experts, there's now a large amount of groundwater on Mars, although very salty. Thus, data sent by the European probe Mars Express indicate the existence of at least four lakes located under the south pole of the planet. The red planet therefore has both water and energy, components necessary to sustain life. Jack Mustard, a researcher involved in the exploration of Mars since 1989 with NASA, has studied the soil conditions at six locations on the red planet. And the results of this work have given more information about the past of Mars. According to him, it now seems very likely that some Earth organisms could exist on Mars. Although some of them may pose health risks to astronauts, there are also beneficial microbes that can help produce food and material on Mars. This hypothesis can be considered an excellent lead to human life on the red planet. More evidence that life once existed on Mars, according to many scientists, is the planet's soil, most of which is made up of silica at 25%, which, because of its iron content, gives the soil its famous reddish color. In addition, the soil of Mars contains a lot of calcium, magnesium, sulfur, sodium, and aluminum. The soil's acidity ratio and some of its other characteristics are so close to those of the Earth that plants could well take root there. So theoretically, life could well exist in such soil. The presence of ice was found in the soil. The mystery was finally solved in 2008, when one of the probes remaining at the North Pole was able to extract water from the soil. Five years later, information was published that the amount of water in the surface layers of the soil of Mars is about 2%. According to data from NASA's Phoenix probe, which arrived on Mars on May 25, 2008, the ratio of pH and some other parameters of Martian soil are close to those of Earth, and plants could theoretically be grown there. Thus, the soil on Mars 
meets the minimum requirements and also contains the elements necessary for the emergence and maintenance of life both in the past, present, and future. But then, is there water on Mars? Many studies have proven that in the past, there was a large amount of liquid water on the surface of the red planet. However, a question arises, is there still water there now? The planet Mars was covered with oceans, rivers, and lakes, traces of which are clearly visible on the images from orbit. One of the lakes was the present Gale Crater. Until now, very little data has been obtained on the composition of Martian water. A study conducted by Japanese scientists proves that its composition was very similar to the water of the Earth's oceans. The oceans of the red planet were rich in minerals and salts. This is indicated by fossilized water particles dating back billions of years. In particular, smectite, a clay mineral, was found in the samples, which is formed on our planet with liquid water by ion exchange. Moreover, the measurements showed that the deposits of the Gale Crater were also formed in the presence of liquid water. The pH found was close to that of the current terrestrial oceans. In fact, the atmospheric pressure on Mars is very low, about one hundredth of that on Earth, allowing water to flow on its surface. However, dark narrow lines on the Martian slopes suggest that salt water may be flowing. In this context, NASA researchers officially confirmed in a press conference on September 28, 2015, that liquid water exists on the surface of the red planet. Saltwater flows form on the slopes of Martian mountains during the summer months and disappear during the cold season, according to scientists. The water colors the salt deposits on Mars and are visible in photographs taken by the high-rise orbiter the width of the streams does not exceed 16 feet. Obviously, although the seasonal streams detected may be traces of lakes that once existed on the planet's surface, they are by no means filled with water. As the researchers suggest, 4.3 billion years ago, there was an ocean on Mars, reaching in some places a depth of over one mile. Over time, almost all the water it contained evaporated into space about 3.5 billion years ago, and the remains turned into a polar cap. Another interesting fact indicating the presence of water in the atmosphere are the thick clouds, whose appearance is associated with the fact that the uneven topography of the planet directs the air masses upwards, where they cool and the water vapor they contain condenses into ice. Above Mariner's canyons, clouds appear at an altitude of about 30 miles, when Mars is at the point of perihelion. Air currents from the east stretch the clouds over several hundred miles in length, while at the same time, their width decreases to a few tens of miles. All these findings reinforce the idea of finding life forms on Mars. The latter would certainly be simple, but could be useful for future space colonization missions. But why has liquid water disappeared on the surface of Mars? Most of the water that covered the surface of Mars did not escape into space as previously believed, but is found in the minerals that make up the rocks of the planet. This is the claim of a study by American scientists, published on March 16, 2021, in the journal Science. Geological and geomorphological evidence indicates that Mars contained large volumes of liquid water about 4 billion years ago. On the surface of the red planet, dry riverbeds, basins of ancient lakes, and oceans are still preserved. Generally, it is thought that most of the water left Mars due to low gravity during the first billion years of the planet's existence. NASA researchers have challenged this assumption. As the scientists calculated about 4 billion years ago, 
there was enough water on Mars to cover the entire planet with an ocean about 100 to 5,000 feet deep. In terms of volume, this is about half the size of the Atlantic Ocean on Earth. The authors, using a combination of methods, analysis of the chemical composition of the current atmosphere and the Earth's crust, analysis of meteorites, rover, and orbiter data, have estimated the volume of water in all its forms, vapor, liquid, and ice, contained in the crust of Mars today. Water is composed of hydrogen and oxygen, but not all hydrogen atoms are identical. The vast majority have a single proton in their nucleus, while a tiny fraction, about 0.02%, exists as deuterium, also called heavy hydrogen, which contains a proton and a neutron in its nucleus. Heavy hydrogen is more strongly held by the planet's gravitational field, so that over time, there's an increase in the ratio of deuterium to hydrogen in the atmosphere. With this indicator, scientists assess the amount of original water. Then, they calculate the proportion of this quantity that has evaporated, taking into account what is accumulated in minerals and remains. The results of the simulation showed that about 4.1 to 3.7 billion years ago, the volume of water on the surface of Mars decreased by 40 to 95%. At the same time, between 30 and 99% of the Martian water absorbed minerals during this hydration process. Eventually, some of these minerals returned through volcanic gases, but this was not enough to restore the planet's hydrosphere, that is, to restore all the areas of the planet where water was present. When water interacts with rocks, the rocks are altered or hydrated, meaning they accumulate water. This process occurs on both Earth and Mars, but because the Earth is tectonically active, the old crust is constantly dissolved into the mantle and returns water to the atmosphere through volcanism. Mars as a whole is tectonically inactive, and so the drying of the surface here has occurred irrevocably. Therefore, all this water was sequestered quite early and never returned. Like Earth, Mars has polar caps, but unlike our planet, these polar caps are made of carbon dioxide ice and water ice. During the summer in the southern hemisphere, most of the ice cap sublimes, a process in which the ice turns directly into gas and a residual ice cap forms. Frozen carbon dioxide accumulates as a relatively thin layer, about three feet thick on the northern cap in winter. While the southern cap has a permanent layer of dry ice about 25 feet thick. The northern polar cap is about 620 miles in diameter during the summer on Mars, and contains about 1 million cubic miles of ice. If it were evenly distributed throughout the cap, it would be one mile thick. In July 2018, evidence was presented of a deep lake under the southern polar cap. The evidence was a bright signal picked up by the Marsis radar installed on the Mars Express probe. The signal looked like an indication of a large amount of liquid water under the ice sheet. But because of the temperature well below the melting point of water, even very salty water, at the base of the Martian polar cap, this interpretation has since been repeatedly challenged. The most likely explanation for the reflected radio signal remains an aqueous solution of certain salts, such as magnesium perchlorate or calcium chloride. In June 2018, NASA reports an excellent discovery in the track of the search for life on Mars. Organic matter was found on the red planet in soil samples collected from a 3 billion year old rock in Gale Crater by the Curiosity rover. The 
rover also detected methane in the Martian atmosphere. The search for traces of forms of life outside of Earth focuses on the building blocks of Earth, including organic compounds and molecules, although these may exist without life. The existence of organic matter may be of extraterrestrial origin, expressing the sign of ancient life or a source of food for living creatures at the time of Mars. Whatever its origin, the presence of organic matter is proof and a biochemical clue for researchers. Methane is considered the simplest organic molecule. It is present in other places in our solar system that could harbor life, such as some of the natural satellites of Saturn and Jupiter, like the moon Titan. And if life exists elsewhere, it is probably very different from what we know on Earth. In its mission, the Curiosity rover was able to dig a little deeper below the surface than its predecessors. Looking a little deeper allows us to better understand the history of the soil and the periods it's gone through. This is not possible on the surface because the surface is constantly being blasted by radiation. Curiosity sampled sites by drilling one inch below the surface in Gale Crater, where the rover landed in 2012. The crater named 96 miles, measuring as its name suggests 96 miles in diameter, was most likely formed by a meteor impact between 3.5 and 3.8 billion years ago. It probably contained a lake and now includes a mountain in its center. The rover was able to heat the samples to 1,508 degrees Fahrenheit and studied the organic molecules released by gas analysis. The organic and volatile molecules, comparable to organic-rich sedimentary rock samples on Earth, include thiopine, methyl thiophene, methane thiol, and dimethyl sulfide. To explain the origin of these organic compounds, researchers believe they are fragments of larger molecules that were present on Mars billions of years ago. But given that the Martian surface is exposed to radiation from space, it is very likely that the radiation broke down the organic material. The discovery of ancient organic molecules, which were deposited when the red planet may have been habitable in the first inch of the rocks, supports future missions that will drill deeper to learn more about the history of Mars's organic molecules. For five years, Curiosity used its laser spectrometer to measure methane in the atmosphere of Gale Crater. Before that, researchers didn't understand why the little methane detected in the Martian atmosphere varied. With five years of data from a single location, they now have answers. The presence of methane in the planet's atmosphere revealed some points from years past. However, due to its extremely low concentration, less than 1%, scientists have not been able to make an unambiguous statement about the nature of its origin. Nevertheless, the presence of methane, even in small quantities, suggests that its source or sources still exist on the planet. On Earth, living organisms are the main source of methane, supporting the idea of existence of life on Mars. In fact, there's a recurring seasonal variation in methane, which means that it is released from the Martian surface or from reservoirs beneath the surface. Methane could even be trapped in water-based crystals in a planet's subsurface, which could prove that life has been discovered on Mars. Methane is a powerful greenhouse gas, and it could have maintained a climate that would have preserved the lake on Mars. This phenomenon could even be happening below the surface now. The release of methane is an active process on the red planet. The manifestation of this gas on Mars adds a new mystery to the equation. The detection of this organic molecule in the Martian atmosphere, combined with the discovery of organic compounds in the soil of the red planet, supports the hypothesis of life on Mars in its past. Gale Crater was probably habitable 3.5 billion years ago, according to what Curiosity has shown us. Conditions would have been comparable to Earth, 
It is also at this same period that life was evolving on our own planet. Knowing that these molecules and compounds were present at that time gives new strength to the idea that life was born or existed on Mars. So if you were ever asked, is there any sign of life on Mars, you might say we don't know, but these results tell us we're on the right track. In the movie Interstellar, directed by the British Christopher Nolan, the Earth has become almost uninhabitable, and people have no time to escape. If there is no time for salvation, then why not save humanity as a whole? According to the script of the film, a certain professor has worked out a plan that a spaceship with 5,000 human embryos should travel to a planet suitable for life. But to do this, it must first be found, which the main characters do. Could such a planet, according to the scenario of this film, become Mars? Has it always been habitable, or has it only started to be in the last few years? Or perhaps it is humans who have contributed to the emergence of life on the Red Planet. Jonathan Lunine, a planetary scientist at Cornell University in New York, called the scientific debate, which has been going on for nearly 10 years among scientists, a great dilemma. These discussions began to take place in particular after the discovery on Mars of traces of microorganisms, water, climate change, and various chemical substances necessary for the life of terrestrial organisms, including sulfur, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and carbon. These discoveries have become the basis for a new theory that life as we know it originated on Mars. But there are questions that haunt the proponents of this theory. Did life on Mars originate independently of Earth? Or did a planet transfer organic compounds and microorganisms with the help of meteorites about 3.8 billion years ago? Some scientists tend to suggest that life originated on Mars. They have drawn a similar conclusion based on the study of Martian soil samples obtained during a space mission. According to them, life on Earth appeared thanks to meteorites from Mars, on which microorganisms were present. This hypothesis is not so far from the real facts. According to the International Association of Meteorite Collectors, Martian meteorites have been discovered not only in Antarctica, but also in various regions of the world. About 160 fragments of Martian meteorites could have fallen to the Earth billions of years ago, carrying the key microorganisms that eventually created life on the planet as we know it today. Thus, signs of life on Mars will help in the study of early life on Earth and answer the question, how did life as we know it arise on our planet? So according to this strange theory, life originated on Mars. If we stay with the idea of transfer of life from one planet to another, the most likely scenario would be that terrestrial life as we know it today could have existed on Mars, but that it was microorganisms that initially landed on Earth. In 2021, a new theory emerged. Professor of Biophysics Christopher Mason, who stated that more than 30 spacecraft have visited Mars in space exploration, wondered, what if humans inadvertently brought primitive life forms to Mars, then discovered them and decided that life on the planet originated billions of years ago? While space agencies like NASA have precise and detailed protocols in place to ensure that their spacecraft are free of organisms that could inadvertently travel during a space mission, when it comes to microorganisms, it is difficult to achieve complete sterilization. It is therefore complicated for a spacecraft or lander to go into space without a primary life form, despite all the strict protocols. Mason insists that when studying Martian soil samples, it is necessary to separate microorganisms that were found directly on Mars from those that were 
brought in by humans. However, scientists have confirmed that the Martian crater Jezero was a lake billions of years ago. This crater is the perfect place to look for evidence of ancient microbial life. A few billion years ago, the red planet once had warm water, carbon dioxide, an atmosphere, and maybe even life flourished on our near neighbor. Now, the surface of Mars is a dry desert, burned by radiation. The temperatures vary from negative 220 to positive 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Four billion years ago, Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in the solar system, erupted on Mars. Its diameter is equal to 370 miles, and its height is equal to three times Mount Everest. The eruption was so massive that it triggered a chain reaction. All the volcanoes started to explode at the same time. A catastrophe on a planetary scale occurred. In fact, unlike the Earth, Mars does not experience plate tectonics, hence the colossal size of its volcanoes. On our planet, the crust moves relative to the mantle's hotspot, which ejects lava at the surface, forming a succession of small volcanoes. On Mars, the lava accumulates at a single point, giving birth to gigantic volcanoes. Today, the red planet has lost almost all of its internal geological activity. Only a few landslides, CO2 geysers at the poles, earthquakes, and small lava flows still occur. This theory would explain the trigger that made Mars as we know it today. Humanity has already reached that technological level where it can afford to leave its cradle and start exploring other planets in our solar system. Who knows, maybe one day in the near future, the first human settlements on other worlds will have surfaced and the question of the possibility of spreading human civilization beyond Earth will be only a memory. Although it seems rather utopian, colonization and transformation of the Mars climate are theoretically possible. Compared to other planets in the solar system, Mars is the best option. Venus is totally unsuitable for manned flights, Mercury too. The closest celestial body to us is the Moon, but there's no air there so the interest is not so high. On Mars, there is a small atmosphere, signs of a hydrosphere in the central regions, polar caps containing glaciers. It is a planet with a climate. Compared to other celestial bodies, the conditions are not so bad. The atmosphere is almost 100 times weaker than on Earth, but compared to other planets, it is the closest to Earth. Furthermore, we know that there is water on the red planet, currently only in the form of ice, and that violent dust storms periodically rage in its deserts and mountain valleys. In recent years, organic matter has been discovered on Mars. This, of course, does not directly mean that our neighbor was once inhabited, but it always stimulates the development of a wide variety of theories in this respect. In addition, the presence of water and atmosphere on the planet makes it hypothetically suitable for human development, with the problem of microgravity on human health still pending. Although there are a number of problems associated with sending people to Mars, for the moment, one of the main ones is the distance. Modern cosmonautics already has experience of a long stay of a person in space, the Russian cosmonaut Valery Polyakov stayed on board the space station Mir for more than 14 months, 437 days, 18 hours, in near-Earth orbit. This is enough time to fly to Mars and back. However, the fundamental difference between a Mars expedition and flights on an orbital station is that the astronauts will not have time to adapt. They will have to start working on a planet empty of humans left to their own devices immediately after the flight. Thus, by the time they approach Mars, their physical fitness will have to be at its best. Moreover, 
If during the flights to the space station only a few hundred miles separate them from Earth, then for the Martian expedition, this figure will cross tens, even hundreds of millions of miles. Sending a single expedition to Mars is associated with enormous financial costs, which according to some estimates can amount to more than $100 billion and a huge risk for the crew. It is important to understand that the distance of Earth and Mars from each other is not a constant value. In fact, both planets revolve around the Sun and only once every 26 months the neighboring planet is closer to ours. This condition is called opposition. In addition, once every 15 to 17 years, the so-called Great Confrontation occurs, and it is at these times that the distance between the planets is minimal. However, it is still about 35 million miles. Although this is already significantly better than the maximum distance, which is more than 250 million miles. It should also be noted that during the flight, the planets will not remain motionless, but will continue to move away from each other. But how long will it take to fly to Mars? It is the enormous distance which causes a long flight time even on a spacecraft that remains a serious obstacle to flying to this neighboring planet. To describe this enormous distance, let's take examples of the time it would take to walk to Mars. The average walking speed is estimated to be about 3 miles per hour. In such a case, a trip to Mars on foot, if it were possible, would take nearly 1600 years. And that's just walking with no stops or respite. On a car, traveling at a speed of 62 miles per hour, the trip to the red planet would take 63 to 64 years. That's still a lot of time, but compared to walking, there's already significant progress. An airline, flying at a speed of 560 miles per hour, could get to Mars in six to seven years. Certainly, in the case of an airplane and a car, the question arises of refueling and rest for the crew. There are no gas stations or rest points on the way to Mars. As such, there are no planes or machines capable of transporting a person to other planets. Thus, depending on the trajectory and taking into account the power of recurrent rockets, the flight to the red planet would take about 250 to 300 days. Since the Earth and Mars are getting closer every two and a half years, we will either have to wait for the right moment to leave or wait longer in the shuttle. Unmanned spacecraft could get to Mars faster. For example, the New Horizons probe, which left the vicinity of Earth with the highest speed of any spacecraft at more than 10 miles per second, could head to Mars in about a month and a half. However, even if distance ceases to be an obstacle, many questions remain. How to land on Mars? What spacecraft will be needed to make this journey to a neighboring planet? How do we build a space station or surface shelter on another planet? Will it be comfortable to live in an artificial atmosphere that must be maintained? What about the problems associated with microgravity? The fourth closest planet to the Sun is the most studied in the solar system after the Earth. Mars, with its vast territories, unique geological features, and completely inhospitable climate, can only be mastered by the joint work of humans and machines. Semi-autonomous vehicles will be needed to perform work that is too tedious and dangerous for humans. Aerial photography and reconnaissance, setting up storage and protection during long field trips, and transporting a colossal quantity of geological samples. Work is therefore underway to create such rovers, which could become a kind of habitat for researchers, necessary to carry out research for several days. But before colonizing Mars, the objective will be the moon. For several decades now, probes and rovers have been able to transmit incredibly detailed images of the red planet. They have helped discover that there was once water there and have confirmed that Mars and Earth are very similar. They also showed that organic life could still exist today and most likely existed before. 
the effort to study the surface of Mars and unravel its history is far from over. In the coming decades, we will probably continue to send rovers there, and why not send the first humans? Before asking the question of the development and colonization of a new planet, it is necessary to do enormous scientific research that will give answers to these questions. To what extent does the composition and internal structure of the red planet differ from Earth? How did the evolutionary development of the two planets differ? And what resources on the surface of Mars will be available for future use? Scientists will also have to find out whether Mars once had a dense atmosphere and oceans, whether such a necessary component as water is still available somewhere, what climatic changes the planet has undergone during its long geological history, what are the reasons for these changes, and how stable the planet's climate is, and of course, did a chemical evolution take place on Mars which could have led to the formation of organic molecules, i.e. life. On the other hand, from the point of view of atmospheric chemistry, it is necessary to explain how methane can be in one place and not in another. It was supposed to be distributed all over the planet for up to a month and enter the remote polar regions, but for some reason, this does not happen. Finally, scientists are still trying to find the answer to the ultimate question. Are we the only living beings in this galaxy? But the question that may plague your mind at the end of this video and still remains unanswered. Was life born on Mars? Are we originally Martians?